I, I see you looking at my package. <laughs> it's a good package. Yeah, one of the biggest we've had in the house. What's up, I'm Be The Installer, this is Jen. We are here with the Hisense L5G. This is a 120 inch projector screen with an ultra short throw projector. I'm excited to put it up on this wall and compare it to the 98 inch TCL TV here. See if we have enough wall space and if it can handle the light that comes in during the day. And of course I have Jen here to help me. I'm excited to see the difference between what a projector looks like versus a TV. And I just think it'll be really, really interesting to see how it works with our family, with our boys running around. Yeah, I don't know if we're gonna have it on the stand. If when you move that stand, is it gonna have calibration issues? There's a lot of variables involved with this. So it's the first time that we've had an ultra short throw up on this wall, or we will in a second. So let's get into it. Okay, so make sure if you like this video, smash the like button, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you can be notified when we have a new upload. And I wanna know, would you go for a projector over a big TV? What's your preference? Let us know in the comments. Woo, let's do it. All right, let's see. Ooh, Ooh that's kind of cool. Got a lot of space in here. Let's move this sucker out, huh? You want to help me lift this? Sure. Where are we going? Now? Ugh, actually, it's really light. I got it. <laughs> let's put this over here. Now this. I'm not usually used to this in a TV box. I know this is good for wine. That's what I know. Can <laughs> you take those? Yeah. Ready? One, two, three. Oops. Come on, muscles. There we go. It got stuck on the handles. There you go. You, you got that. All right. That was a solid amount of packaging. Now we're good. I really want to open the Laser Cinema Ultra Th Short Throw L5 series, but we do need to get the screen up first, so we gotta take the TV down, put the screen up real quick, and then we can open the fun box here and set it up. So we got some of the stuff out of the way. Let's go ahead and put the screen up, yeah? Sounds good. All right, let's do it. Good? Crank. Thank you. this down. Let's get the TV off. Okay, we're ready. It's gonna be heavy. You ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Up. Yeah. Okay. You good? Thanks. That's good. I got it. Not a lot of good places for us to hide a hundred inch TV. That should suffice. I'm gonna grab the cord. Thank you. Okay. Let's do it. Cool. All right, I'm gonna go against my better judgment and I'm definitely gonna use instructions for this. <laughs> Please. What do you got, babe? What you got? So it looks like I have some brackets, some mounting brackets. This is like Christmas, man. There's just things yeah. everywhere. So many things. These some, some uh, L-shaped brackets we got here. Yeah. Why don't we just pile them on the side here? So this is everything that was in the box for the projector screen, a bunch of framing, the actual screen, and then some instructions, some plastic, some gloves, brackets, and all this. So now we have to use the instructions, put it together. It might take us a bit, so we'll show you the updates as we go. Well, looks like you've got your work cut out for you. I've got to go get the kids, so uh, when I come back, let's have this together, okay? Yeah. I think Eric's going to have to help me. This is a lot of work. I think all so, right. probably. Cool. See you in a bit. Okay. Sounds good. Putting the screen together was a little tricky. First, we had to put A1 and A2. These are the two top and the bottom pieces. Now they don't list that A1 and A2, you flip it around and that's the bottom as well. So that was a little confusing. Not the end of the world, we figured it out. And then on the sides, you put the two pieces in and then connect all of that with elbow braces and some connection pieces in the middle and screw it all together. And then once you have that all done, then you just stand that up against the wall and then you lay down the screen and you have to be careful with the screen, so we put on the fancy gloves, laid the screen out, and once we had that down, then we set the frame back on top of the screen. And then it's a matter of just connecting the springs in the order in which they show, where you start from the corners opposite of each other, and then once you have all of the four corners on, then you start from the middle and work your way out. And then once you have that on, then you can put the outer frame on that wraps around the front of the screen, and then connect those pieces, and you're set. Pretty straightforward, took a while, but we're done. Okay, now that we have the screen done, 
we have to slide it out of the way and do the installation. But we just realized that putting the UST projector, we have to have something to set it on because that height will dictate how high the screen goes. So now we have to make a quick IKEA trip to get a stand. So we'll be right back and then we'll put the screen up. Okay, we're back with the $50 special from IKEA. I think we're gonna be okay with this. It's gotta be about 13 inches from the wall, so it'll have to be about this far out. And the good thing is it's very short, so that'll get the projector here and the screen here, which will be similar to where the TV was. Because before, if we were gonna use this stand, the projector would have had to have been like the bottom here going up, which would have looked pretty ridiculous since our couches are so low, we'd be like looking up here. So now we're gonna be able to get it back down to where that TV was, which will give us a good visual on how big this is versus the different TVs we've had here. And we'll probably even be able to show you that. So now I have to do all the measurements real quick, put the template up, hang the brackets, and then we'll put the screen up. Okay, that's good. Putting the screen up was a little easier. First, we just had to figure out how tall our little stand is and then add a certain amount of distance to the top of the bracket, which is about 74 inches. And then we needed to find the center of the wall, which I already had marked from previous installations. And then we find studs that cross-reference in the general area where they want you to put the two brackets. After you do all that, I kind of jab the wall at the top and the bottom for each side. And then it's just a matter of pre-drilling. And then we just had to put the two brackets on, screw the top and the bottom, adjust them a little bit to make sure that they're level. And then at the end, before you put the screen up, you actually put these long hooks on that can lower or raise this and micro adjust it once we put the screen on. So now it's time to put the screen on. And guess what? Jen's back just in time for the easy work. All right, we got it. You ready to do this? As ready as I'll ever be. All right, we just gotta basically get the uh, screen up on that part. Just, it'll sit down on those brackets and then we can adjust these brackets as needed. And then we'll pull in this little Ikea table we bought and unbox the projector, throw it up here, calibrate it and all that. Let's go ahead and lift it up. And How then, heavy is this? it's not very heavy at all. It's 26 pounds. It's a lot easier than lifting a hundred inch TV, isn't it? Oh my gosh, this is way easier. I was concerned. Anytime you're working with something this big, Go ahead and lift it up. You can grab, just kind of go under the screen is probably the best way. And then I got about six, four inches or so, and then there we go. Okay, let me see. I have this about four inches on this side. You have a touch more. It's about the same. Let's go, you're, yeah, your way just a smidge. That's pretty good. I feel like that looks pretty darn good. What do you think about our $50 Ikea find? <laughs> Are you good with it? Me? Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Ikea is great for, for cheap finds. I mean, yeah, and we put a little pad on the bottom because the carpet's on this side and the hardwood here. So we put a little pad on it to make it level because it has to be like 13 inches off. So why don't we pull it back just this way a little bit? Well, we're gonna have to put the projector on there and measure it and all that. So sure. good there. Let's move this crap and let's get this uh, unboxed right here. <laughs> Muscles. I mean, this okay. is, this is easy, man. Just have Jen do it. So reading comprehension, it says front. So I'm putting this towards the front to make it easier for us. There you go. Okay. Careful, don't get that face down here too close. Jen gets to do all the fun stuff, man. It's tight. You're faking me out. It's, it's a tight crease here. Okay, what do we have here? Okay, so, ooh, to get the boogers out of the <laughs> out of the, the kids' noses? Kids' noses. And apply makeup. There we go. Yeah, just to clean off the lens and whatnot. There we go. Okay. Nice little. And it's QC in. passed, so we're good. Yeah, passed there we QC. go. You gotta have the QC. So that stuff can sit to the side. We've got that. And we've got some assorted cords, necessary cords. Good deal. Right, we got the white gloves because why not? More white gloves. That's like five sets of white gloves. I like it. Yeah, there you go. I got this guy. And then we've got this remote. Looks good. It's, it's kind of like the ones we prefer where it's not a lot of unused buttons, just the most essential. Got a couple of smart buttons yeah. and uh, just what you need. Yeah. Good deal. Okay. You ready to lift this sucker off? Dun, 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 dun. Nope. Pretty awesome. You want to help me lift this out? Yeah, let's do this. Let's get this out. Again, way lighter than a TV. All right. 
Got some precautionary information here. Good. Don't wipe it. Don't dump water down it. Oh. Uh, don't let it get too hot. Okay. Uh, oh, it does not here, take morning pull coffee. I'm gonna pull the you plastic out. Yeah. Oops. Thank got you. It. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's nice. First time seeing a UST projector in person here. I guess besides at CES. Pretty nice looking. It's got a nice fabric grill here. And then uh, you can see the lens is down there and it bounces off that mirror and then it goes up onto the screen. So now we have to do our measurements and figure out how to calibrate it properly. So I think good. I'll, I'll work on that and I appreciate your help so far and I'll holler back when we got it all set up so you can see how it looks. Sound Sounds good? Sounds good, I'm excited. All right, before we calibrate this, because once we calibrate, I don't want to turn it. So let's go ahead and check out the back. Have just, you know, your, the connection for the power there and then the cable jack there. And on this side, we have three HDMIs. HDMI one is 4K60, so you can just connect that to anything, your, your cable box or whatever. And then these two ports, two and three, are 4K at 120. Uh, two on the top there is the eARC port, so connect that to a soundbar or speaker system. And then this one you can put uh, HDMI three to a gaming console that does 4K at 120, so you can game at high speed. And there's a couple USB ports, and then you know you got your typical landline and all that. So. You can uh, see it's pretty straightforward on the back. You connect that, that's gonna be against the wall here on the other side, power, et cetera, on that side. This has to be off the wall, so it'll be plenty of room back there, and then uh, we'll have this all set up. So now, we have to calibrate this before we show any content, so let's flip it around and calibrate this sucker. Okay, so Jen showed us the remote before. It's pretty straightforward. It's not quite as bulky as some of the other Hisense remotes, so I, I don't mind this remote. Up, down, left, right isn't as clicky as some of the remotes. It feels a little bit more premium. I mean, it's not backlit, but up, down, left, right, volume channels, a back button, you know, settings and all that, input at the top right. I like it. Google information, and then down here at the bottom, it's got Prime Video, a media button. I wonder if you can decide what you want that button to be, Disney. YouTube, Google Play, and then Tubi. So I like it. Let's uh, fire this guy up. So I got this calibrated. It was kind of difficult to use the auto calibration technique. We just had to kind of kick the feet around on the bottom of the projector and then it just seems easier if you just go through each corner and kind of manipulate each corner as opposed to doing the auto cal because the auto cal required us to take some photos and they weren't in focus enough, they weren't bright enough. And so it, it just, we had to do it like 10 times to get the auto cal and then it wasn't perfect anyway. So really, you know, if you're experienced at this or if you've ever messed around with one of these, just move the feet around, get it squared up the best you can. Then you can just kick the corners around using the manual calibration and I think this looks great. So I'm really excited to check this out. I'm going to spend the night looking at different content on this and come back tomorrow and give my first impressions on this Hisense L5G. All right, so I'm back with the Hisense and the 120 inch screen. And as you can see, it's a bit darker now because we had to darken the room a bit because it's kind of challenging to record this footage and it's challenging to show you what we're seeing. And really this is a darker room experience. It does have this really cool light rejecting screen, which I'm gonna show you in a bit, but it is not quite as bright as your typical QLED TV or even an OLED TV. But these projectors are great for dark room experience. And I think it's pretty cool. Let's show you some of the OS. This is the older Android TV. Now there's also a Google TV. So this is a couple years old, I guess, from a lot of TV standards, but it's very similar to the Google TV. So I don't think it's a big difference. I, I found all the apps that I need on either. So I'm you get YouTube TV. I also have the MLB ticket and all that. So I can watch the MLB app on this. You can scroll down and find a lot of featured apps and then some recommended different videos here. And then of course, all kinds of different apps. Some of them I probably have used and some of them might just be uh, promoted. I, obviously I don't use this Red Bull TV, but it's featured, so cool. You can go up into the settings and you have all your typical uh, picture adjustments. You can mess around with that. Um, picture adjustments, there's screen adjustments. This is where you can do your, uh, your screen type, The correction, you can do it manually, automatically, like we had said before. 
You can turn off the eye protection thing. Every time we go up to the screen, it does this to protect your eyes, so it really is a bit annoying. So we just turn that off. Obviously, all of us in the family here now know that this thing is bright, so I told them not to look at it. But that's something you'll have to decide because there's a couple issues with that projector stand in general. If people are gonna bump it, you're gonna have to recalibrate or you're gonna have to move that around. Um, and also, it's kind of out into the room a bit because it doesn't sit flush against the wall. So they make specific stands to accommodate for different ultra short throw projectors. So you can just check that out if you are interested in getting one of these. And of course you have uh, other settings, motion, sound, inputs, all these parental controls. I will say that the sound is pretty good. It has two speakers that shoot right straight out at you and it does sound better than most TVs, so that's good. And that would be a big upside uh, just versus a, a TV. However, if you wanted a stereo system or you wanted a sound bar, I'm not sure where you'd put it because this thing already sits on a stand. So you'd have to have another stand below it to house a more powerful speaker. So when watching YouTube TV, which is just typical SDR content, standard dynamic range, it looks like a fairly good TV is the best way I can compare it. It's not bad, it's not super bright and vibrant, but again, in a darker room like this, it looks just fine. And the fact that it's 120 inch is awesome because I have the 98 inch TCL sitting next to it. And honestly, again, this dwarfs it. It's 20 inches larger, of course it should, but it is just very big and immersive. The 120 inch does trump a lot of other aspects of it because you just can't get a TV at 120 inches. So if you have a big wall like this or you sit pretty far back, this is definitely pretty cool. I have to mess around with some of the emotion and processing. It's a little herky-jerky with regards to the movement. And also, it does look a bit pixelated. This is a big screen and it is upscaling it to a very massive size. So of course, it's not gonna look quite as sharp as like a 55 inch OLED, something like that, where the pixel density is much higher. This is very large, so you're gonna have a little bit of a softer screen, I would imagine, but it's not bad. It's just a matter of kind of dialing it in with the motion settings and the digital noise reduction and things like that to see if I can get it even better. But overall, I could definitely watch sporting events like this, no question about it. So now we have an HDR movie on Encanto here. This is a good one because we use it for a lot of different TVs to check and see how much color and detail in the shadows there are in certain scenes from TV to TV. And this Hisense projector is not extremely bright in HDR, but it does look pretty decent in a darker room here. I don't know if, if this would look great in a bright room for people <laughs> that are looking for a projector in a bright room sounds kind of ridiculous anyways, but I'm just trying to talk about this as I would need it where I'd be watching some content in a brighter room and some in a darker room. You know, I think this looks great with all the lights out, but it doesn't look like this when the lights are on. And maybe that's a good opportunity for us to turn the lights on and show you what it looks like. So we're gonna show you turning these lights on. We have the big 150 watt bulb that we use for videos. And then we have another light on the other side. And as you can see, much more difficult to see things now on the screen. The very matte light finish on the screen does a great job of rejecting the light in a sense. You don't see reflections, but it does just make it more difficult to see the overall picture if there's a lot of light coming in. So this is about as bad as it can get. These are really bright lights, forward facing. And as you can see, much harder to see all the different detail and color and whatnot in the screen. Here you can see it in a bit of a brighter scene. Still difficult to see with all this light on, but it's not really helpful for us just to look at it like this because a lot of people understand that this is for a dark room or for your theater room, and you probably wouldn't get this for the living room with a bunch of windows behind it. So let's get into some gaming because I wanted to see how this projector games Call of Duty. Okay, we're back here now with uh, the Call of Duty connected through the PS5 here, and it looks pretty good. I mean, you know, it's just, it's so big, man. I thought, I thought the TCL TV that we had, the 98 inch looked large, but this is just massive. It's 120 inch, of course, it's so much bigger, but it doesn't have, you know, the brightness that a lot of the TVs have, and it also doesn't have the same perfect contrast, a lot of them do, or even close to perfect, I would say. So it just doesn't look as vibrant. Again, we're in a darker room, which helps, and this is the first time that I have actually reviewed uh, ultra short throw projectors. So, I mean, it is a huge screen, and it, you know, it's pretty nice comparable to a lot of like mediocre TVs, but the input lag being a lot higher, so it's kind of slower gameplay, makes it a little bit more difficult to stay alive in these kind of games, but overall, pretty fun. All right, so my final first impressions on this Hisense 
L5G are that this is a just massive screen. I like it. It rejects light quite nicely. And you know, in a dark room, this is probably a really nice setup for most people. It's brighter than most TVs in the lower end range. Once you start getting up to the higher end TVs, obviously those are going to be brighter, but you don't have anything of this size. So it's one of those things where you're talking size versus quality. I think this does a pretty good job of kind of hitting some good metrics on both. Obviously on the size, it's enormous. So let me know in the comments what you think. Would you go with some Something like this. What other things do you want to hear about this projector as I am sure to compare this versus the 98 inch TCL that I have in the room? Let me know those things in the comment. Make sure to smash the like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell and all that. And just like that, I'll see you in the next one.